All right, today we are gonna be looking at the Insta360 GO 2. We're gonna be talking about what it is, how it's different from the first one, if it's any good, and then we're gonna go over a few things that, that still need improvement. I really appreciate that you are here at this video because it's, it's release day. I've had this for a few weeks. Everyone's probably releasing their same videos today, so you probably saw a lot of options when it came to the GO 2. Thank you for clicking on this video. And if you like this video, hit that like button below because that lets YouTube know that you made a good decision in choosing this video. So hit that like button. Yeah, let YouTube know that you make good decisions. Okay, so first up, what is the Insta360 GO 2? Basically, it's a it's a teeny tiny action camera that is that is kind of amazing. 26.5 grams to be exact. You you kind of barely notice that it's even in your hand or, or when it's mounted on the necklace pendant. It magnetically mounts to you via, it actually blends in really well with the Be A Good Human shirt. Kind of camouflages it. If you want to wear this thing and not let anyone know, wear a Be A Good Human shirt. <laughs> But the entire thing at 26 and a half grams, the case added 63.5 grams together, um, a very small and lightweight package that can also shoot up to 1440p at 50 frames a second. It can shoot nine megapixel photos, time lapse, time shift, hyper lapse. It can do slow motion at 1080, 120 frames a second. It can do that whole flow state trick where you, you can spin the camera all the way around and the horizon stays upright. It doesn't look like the camera's even moving. It's waterproof down to four meters. The back of it is magnetic. So not only does it stick to things like the pendant, but it would also just stick to like a metal wall at the side of your car. It has built in 32 gigabytes of memory, 28 of which are usable. You can preview everything through the app and, and the case itself is actually a remote control. So the case is a wireless charging remote control that also holds and charges the camera and has little tripod feet on it. So you can set this thing up and film something just with the case. Oh, and in the app, it has AI editing. So you could go out, film a bunch of clips, pull up the app, select all the clips you want, hit AI edit, and it'll, it'll just make you a video with music and everything cut to the beat. It's actually a fairly clever AI system. Not really something that I would use much, but, but for some people, I think it's actually a, a really good use case because a lot of people go out and you film a ton and then you never edit your footage. Case in point, my buddy Weston, he films lots of stuff and he never makes videos out of it. This one's, this one's for you, Wes, and I'm, I'm poking the bear. So this camera is, it's all of that. And, and I'm sure I've missed something in there. There's, you can go to the first link in the description, shoot over to Insta360's website if you wanna geek out on all the specs of this little camera. But for me, it's a, it's a super easy to use, super convenient because I can just have this whole thing in my pocket. It's just a little bit larger than my AirPod Pro case. Pop this thing out at any point. And if I'm wearing the, the lanyard, do this. I really like the, the hat clip or the, I guess just the clip clip. It's got like a little hilting mechanism on it. And the camera itself, where'd it go? There it is. <laughs> the camera itself pops in here and then you can mount it on your, hang on. You can mount it all sorts of different places, but what I really liked is my hat. This mount right here is what I've done almost all of my shooting with this camera with, because again, it kind of gives you that POV angle, right? I can do things with my hands and you see my hands as I'm, so if I'm climbing a ladder, like climbing a ladder or climbing a rope, something like that, you see me doing it. I actually took this out to the park with Eleanor. Morgan was blowing bubbles for her. Eleanor was running around, I was chasing her and I tackled her to the ground and in slow motion, this recorded this moment where Eleanor's on the ground and she's looking up at me and you see me tickling her and she is laughing her head off and dang, I just think of clips like that and I think of like, like 20, 30 years down the road and being able to look back at moments like that. And that's what I think this camera's for. I think ugh, this camera is for capturing moments, right? That's, that's what it's designed for. It's designed to disappear, to not be there so you can enjoy the moment and, and it'll capture it for you. 
And then the other thing that I look at this camera for is because it's so small, because it's so tiny, this camera can go places that my bigger cameras can't go. The reason that GoPro became so popular is because it could fit in spots that you couldn't fit a larger camera, right? Like you, it became a crash cam for everyday people. But then you bring something like this along and you say the GoPro, ver where's the GoPro? Look at the size comparison. <laughs> This is, this actually feels huge compared, especially the GoPro 9, because it even got bigger than the previous versions, but I think the GoPro weighs somewhere in the range of 200 and something grams, and again, this is 26 and a half grams. Which again, just means that you can fit this in places and get really, really cool shots. You can get super creative with where you put this thing, and this will definitely be in my bag to get shots. Mainly it'll be in my bag for POV, because I really like POV shots, and this thing is the easiest and the light, lightest weight to do POV. With a GoPro on your head, if anyone's had a GoPro head mounted, you, you really feel it. With this thing, you don't really know it's there. You kind of forget that it's up there. So a clever teeny tiny camera, but but what's new? What's new about the two from the one? Well, right away you can see from the charging cases, they're quite a bit different. The charging case on the one uh, had this kind of plastic cover on the top, which I wasn't thrilled with. The Go itself was a little smaller than the current one, but the case was, it was a charging case. That's kind of what it did. And then it had that lightning port on the bottom with this little rubber bit. I was never thrilled with the Go one one case. Oh, and it charged via micro USB, which, come on. And they fixed on the Go 2 case. So the Go 2 case, first off, charges with USB-C, has a quarter 20 mount on the actual case because the charging case has this very robust hinge. So while the camera is inside of here, I can use it as a remote control, but also, let's say I had this on my head mount, I can now still use this as my remote control. I can change the mode, I can start and stop recording with this as kind of a wireless remote. The case is by far the most clever part of the, the new, Insta360 Go. Oh, and also the Go itself has a replaceable lens cover now. Yeah, you just pop a new one of those on there and you're you're good to go again. But the real question with all this is, is this a good camera? Is it a decent camera? And, and the answer is, yeah, I'm actually quite impressed with how it performs for its size. Again, it only goes up to 1440p, 1080 at 120 frames a second slow-mo, but it looks really good. The colors are good, the dynamic range is good. I took it down to the beach and, and kind of did like a, a spin test. So you can see side light, you can see direct light, you can see backlight. And a camera this small with a teeny tiny sensor like that, I was shocked at how well it did in those different lighting scenarios. The colors looked great. It, it kept the shadows and, and pulled down the highlights really well and uh, yeah, I'm actually very impressed with this camera. Now, can it compare to something like a GoPro Hero 9? It's a great question. And if you guys want to comment below, if you wanna see a comparison video between the Insta360 Go 2, this teeny tiny little action camera and, and this big, now it feels big and heavy because I have this little tiny guy, but the, the Hero 9 Black, the flagship action camera, the, the king of the hill versus versus this little teeny tiny guy. Let me know in the comments if you guys wanna see that comparison. I think, I think you might actually be surprised at the side by side. If you guys wanna see that though, I will make that video. Uh, the other part of this, this camera is the audio. The audio is, it's very good, or it's quite good, but it's terrible with wind. On the one, the sound wasn't great. And one of the main reasons was that there's, there's no wind muff on here. There's just like one little speaker up on top. And I think one on the bottom, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure just one on top. So kind of mostly wind would make it sound poor. So maybe if I duck, oh yeah, see down here, there's no wind. How does the go sound down here? Now we'll, we'll go back up into the wind. Ah. Now up here, it's very windy, quite windy. We'll try different angles with the wind to see if the level of windiness, that's the technical term, uh, changes. Any little bit of wind and you hear it right away because 
It's just a, a hole on the top there. I wish there was some kind of either wind muff that I could stick onto the case so that while I was in there, it was protected or some sort of maybe kind of piece like this that I could put it into but that it had a, a wind muff on there. That would that would probably help quite a bit with the audio. Other than that though, the audio is, it's really good in non-windy conditions. So a really great camera, decent audio with it for, for such a tiny camera, but there is one mode on this that, that kind of has sold me on. It's made it so that this will be in my bag. This is something that, that I will be using. You're gonna see clips like this mixed into future videos that are that are POV clips and you'll know it's this thing, not this big, look how much of a difference that is. Oh my gosh. Holy cow, that's so heavy on my head. <laughs> yeah, you'll know it's this thing. But the one mode that's in this that, that really, really got me is pro video mode. And pro video mode gives you the flow state stabilization that we had in this first one where I can take the camera and I could hit record and then I could turn the camera all the way around 360 and nothing changes. The horizon stays upright. So basically like unlimited horizon leveling, really similar to the GoPro with the max lens mod. So the, the already large GoPro with the even larger lens mod on there. And then you can have the feature that this little teeny tiny camera can do built in. And then on top of that, in pro video mode, you can also change the field of view. So I can go from a wide field of view to a narrow field of view. I can change things in the actual app. So also I can go from a 16 by nine this way to a nine by 16 this way with the same clip. So I can take one clip that's, let's say 15, 20 seconds long. I can export it as a 16 by nine, just like this, take the exact same clip, reframe it for nine by 16 like this, re-export it. So I can take the same the same input, the same footage, and export it two different ways because of that pro video mode. Okay, so great camera all around, really, really impressive for such a small camera. What could be improved on this? If, if I just had my dream, I could do anything I want, how would I improve this camera? The first thing would be that internal memory. With 32 gigs of internal memory, again, 28 of that actually being usable, I did eat it up pretty quick. And then once it's eaten up, I have to transfer those files over to my phone, then I can clear them off the camera and then I can record some more. So once you fill this thing up, then, then it's a bit of a process to clear it out. Uh, next up is battery. The battery is, it's good. It's a 30 minute battery built into the camera. And I think you get 120 or 130 extra minutes with the case. So together you're getting a decent amount of battery, but if you just have that camera up top, something like this. I've only got about 30 minutes of recording before the battery dies. I then have to pop it out of this, put it back in the case. I, I can use it like this now, but I can't pop it back on here for a while. I've got to let that thing charge back up, which isn't terrible, but yeah, I mean, teeny tiny camera. It makes sense that the battery is tiny as well, but I'd like more than 30 minutes. Uh, and then lastly is another thing that's very expected for such a tiny camera and it's low light performance. It's it's not terrible, but it's not great by any means. This is not a low light camera. In general, the larger the sensor, the better low light you have. Teeny tiny camera, teeny tiny sensor. And then the last two things, again, me being super picky here, is I, I want the lights changed. One, I wanna be able to turn them off entirely, but two, I'd like it that when it was recording, that it was a red light. Right now, if it's recording, it's a, it's a white light, and that just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why. That bugs me so much, but a white flashing light does not mean recording. I know, that's a stupid one. Okay, the last one is this kind of case. One, the, the old version came with this case, which had a quarter 20 mount on it. You could kind of pop this thing off, and then boom, this was a quarter 20 mount. The new one doesn't seem to, I've been messing with this thing as much as I can. I cannot get it off. It seems like the only way to mount this to a quarter 20 mount or than any kind of action camera mount is with the entire case. So I have to have this entire thing, I have to have the camera in here, and then I can mount it via quarter 20 mount, but then this is a, a much bigger piece. I would love to have, like we did on the last one, just this piece in like a little slim case with a quarter 20 mount, or even better, a two pronged action camera mount, like that, that GoPro two pronged feet thing. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, I know we actually got pretty deep. This was supposed to be just kind of a first look, but let me know for real in the comments if you guys wanna see GoPro Hero 9 Black versus Insta360 Go 2, uh, a side-by-side -side comparison of these two. This thing looks huge now. 
when I'm holding this, this now feel it feels like a big brick. It's crazy how big this suddenly feels when I'm holding this. Comment below. Let me know if you guys want to see it. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go film cool POV stuff. Yeah, I like it. The POV is my favorite part. I like that you can see your own hands doing things. It's just fun. POV is fun. Hit the like button. I'll see you guys soon. Yeah, it's so tiny. That is not what she said.